The Democrats and Republicans continue to spar over the right course in Iraq. President Bush threatens a veto of the Iraq withdrawal bill the Democrats have passed through the House and the Senate. Experts from both political parties sit down with us today to discuss the war in Iraq. This is On the Issues. Welcome to On the Issues. I'm your host, Nicholas Balasey. Terry McAuliffe, immediate past chair of the Democratic National Committee and chair of the Hillary Clinton for President Committee, and Ed Gillespie, immediate past chair of the Republican National Committee, are on the show today to discuss their party's stance on the war in Iraq. I guess based on what you were talking about during the debate and during the question and answer session about Iraq and the current uh, bill right now, Assuming that the president will probably veto this, what will the Democrats' next move be on the war in Iraq? Well, we'll try and overturn the veto, see if we can convince enough Republicans to go with us and overturn the veto. And what, do you, what is your reaction to a lot of people saying they're losing some faith in the Democrats, thinking that they would have made more progress on their 100 hours at this point? Well, in the first 100 hours, they did every single thing they said they would do, from you know, raising the minimum wage to uh, implement the 9-11 Commission report. Mm -hmm and to reduce the student loan interest in half. They did all of that in the first 100 hours. So she accomplished everything Nancy laid out that we did in the campaign. Uh, you know, we've, we've had power now for a couple months. Obviously, some very important uh, issues being dealt with. Obviously, the issue of the war in Iraq. Uh, we've got Henry Waxman doing some important investigative work and when billions of dollars were stolen from Iraq and many other issues that we're dealing with, uh, Alberto Gonzalez. And, so, you know, the Senate and the House being very active and doing exactly what they said they would do. Now, you hear a lot of Republicans and you hear just uh, people who are very concerned about the war saying, well, it's detrimental to the troops if you're holding funding back. What is your uh, reaction to things like that? Our troops are going to get all the funding that they need. And if you actually talk to troops and you go to the Middle East and you talk to our troops over there, they want to come home as soon as possible. But we have got to send a strong signal to Iraq. Their government is in chaos today. Uh, that they've got to get their act together and they got to start getting their folks out on, onto the street and they got to start do, taking their responsibility that we're not going to be an open faucet continuing to spend money uh, and they're going to have to take responsibility for their own government. This is not going to go on forever and that's the important message and that's the message that came out of the 06 elections. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at every polling data today, 70 plus percent of Americans want our men and women home as soon as possible. Two-thirds of Americans are against George Bush's uh, involvement in what he's doing in Iraq. So. They're doing what the American public voted them to do. Now, as someone who's heading the Hillary Clinton for president campaign, what is your reaction to her voting for the war initially and now saying that the troops need to come home? How do you com combat somebody's argument that may be brought because of that? Uh, Hillary Clinton has made it very clear what she voted for was to send the message that the president go back to the U.N. to get the weapons inspectors back into Iraq. And that's what the president had alluded all along in a speech in Cincinnati before the vote that he was going to do. He had no intentions of doing that. He wanted to send the troops in. Uh, we wish he had sent the weapons inspectors back in because you know what we found out after? After they deposed the generals and everybody else, that he had destroyed his stockpile of chemical weapons. Botulism were seen and all the chemical weapons they had. So if we had done what we should have done and sent those weapons inspectors back in, there was no need to put any troops on the ground over there. All right. Great to be with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Great. Appreciate it. Good luck at ABC. Thank you. Now, I guess staying on the war in Iraq issue, because obviously it's something that's really uh, driving the election right now as far as the, the candidates who are campaigning right now. What is your reaction to the Democrats' handling of the war in Iraq issue at this point? Well, they're divided on it, and they need to come together and figure out what they're for. The president obviously has a clear position on this and a clear view. I think it was irresponsible to put $20 billion in incremental spending and wasteful pork barrel spending onto a funding for the troops bill. Uh, they needed to do that to get a number of uh, more moderate Democrats uh, from rural areas to vote for it because it has an artificial timeline for pullout. It's going to be vetoed. 
Uh, they haven't even come together to conference the House and Senate versions to send it to the President to veto. They're dragging their feet and they're putting our troops at risk. The fact is, no matter your party, no matter your view on the war, no one should allow for the possibility of funding for our troops to run out when they are in combat. And I guess with the the reaction to everything that's going on as far as people talking about the past. Well, you know, there were no weapons in, in Iraq and we're, we're there right now. If we do leave, what do you think uh, will actually occur? It, is it a possibility if we leave that nothing will actually happen that's negative? The, 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 the biggest question I have for the Democrats is if you leave now and have a precipitous pullout of our troops from Iraq, what does Iraq look like? a day after American troops are gone, or a week after, or a month after. And the fact is, without doing what we need to do, and the surge is working, is having a positive effect. We've had some violence and some setbacks, but the troops will tell you and the generals will tell you that it is having a positive impact and it needs to have more time to take effect. Uh, but the fact is, it's in our national security interest for us to be, in, uh, to be successful in Iraq and not have Iraq turned over to, to terrorists who mean to do the United States harm sitting over vast uh, reserves of oil. Uh, the fact is that there were not weapons of mass destruction that were found, as you noted, uh, but that was the same intelligence that was held by members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, including John Kerry, who cast a vote uh, to authorize the war. Senator Hillary Clinton cast a vote to authorize the war. Senator John Edwards cast a vote to authorize the war. Senator Edwards at least says, it was a mistake, I shouldn't have done it. Uh, but Hillary Clinton is yet to say that, and I think that is uh, causing her some problems on the Democratic side. Do you take into consideration uh, with that current argument that uh, the bill was actually different than what, act, you know, the conditions changed, in other words. Is that something that you take into consideration when you hear people saying that, oh, well, this person voted for the war, this person voted for the war. Do you take into consideration it was different? Of course, you have to. Uh, the intelligence turned out to be wrong. We've done a number of things to try to improve our intelligence gathering process to make sure that doesn't happen again in the future. But the fact is, uh, is the world better off with Saddam Hussein out of power in Iraq or in power in Iraq? I think out of power in Iraq is the right answer. And uh, what are we going to do now going forward to make sure that Iraq is a stable country in the heart of the Middle East that is an ally in the war on terror and not an enemy in the war on terror? Do you feel that President Bush's plan to send more troops into Iraq is the proper solution to uh, making the violence less? I think it is the proper solution. Uh, like I say, we had some, we had awful violence uh, yesterday, but it had been working. I think it will continue to work if we give it the chance. It was recommended by the Baker Hamilton Commission. It was recommended by the generals, and uh, I think that we need to give it time to uh, to work because uh, the best outcome for us possible is that uh, Baghdad becomes secured and that the Iraqis are able to uh, stand up their own troops, their own police force, their own uh, civil institutions. And, and then we can uh, bring our troops home from Iraq uh, in a way that furthers our national security interest, doesn't hurt our national security interest. Do you feel that it was in the United States national security interest to invade Iraq initially? That was the uh, determination that was made based on the intelligence at the time. And I think uh, uh, you have to look at that intelligence, that vote in that time period, uh, and not second guess it. That was the decision that was made mm -hmm. uh, with strong bipartisan support. I was watching Rudy Giuliani at one of his speeches, and he was saying that the way to combat terrorism is to fight them over there, I guess in Iraq, now that Al-Qaeda is in Iraq, they, which they weren't before, but he said, now that they're there, we need to fight them over there so they don't come here. Do you agree with that assessment, or do you feel there's another way that we can combat terrorism in the future? I, I do agree with that assessment. I think that uh, this is uh, the war on terror, uh, the, the Islamic extremists uh, who mean to uh, to impose their way of life on ours and who hate uh, Western culture and America uh, have been uh, waging attacks on the United States for a long time, going back to the, to the uh, World Trade Center attack of 1993. And uh, the fact is we are going to have to, uh, to confront them uh, because they have brought this uh, war to us. We didn't, we didn't bring it to them, and Iraq is now the central battlefield in that war on terror. And relating to the war, of course, the cost, you mentioned the cost during the presentation tonight. As far as the cost goes, my last question, they're giving the cut. But as far as the cost goes, you said President Bush has a solid plan right now to uh, decrease the deficit. Uh, could you just 
uh, offer some of your opinions on this plan and cleaning the deficit up? Well, we have reduced the deficit. We've cut it in half in three years. The president said he was going to do it in five. So we're ahead of schedule in terms of cutting the deficit in half. And the reason that we're making success in that regard is largely because of the infusion of revenue coming into the federal treasury as a result of the economic growth. That's, that's a result of his policies. Uh, we need to couple that with greater fiscal discipline and restraint in federal spending. The president put forward a budget that would balance by 2012 without raising taxes, but by reining in federal spending. I think that's the right recipe to continue to foster the economic growth and create jobs in our economy. I hear a lot of Democrats saying, well, they he created the deficit because he had a surplus when he started his, his campaign or when he started his uh, term. What's your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, the, the attacks of September 11 uh, changed all of the dynamics relative to our economy and to the needs for spending. Uh, the fact is, he inherited a surplus uh, because a Republican Congress was elected and passed budgets that uh, reigned in federal spending. When Bill Clinton was president with Democrat control of the House and the Senate, his budgets were out of balance and ran deficits for as far as the eye could see. He never put forward a balanced budget until Republicans took control of the House and the Senate. Well, that's all for this week's edition of On the Issues, and thanks for watching.